Hello, it's good to be back. Working on the Mac version of HipFilm has kept us all busy for the past while, but now that it's been released, I'm back with a new tutorial. I'm using HipFilm 2 Ultimate on my Mac, because I finally can, but of course the tutorial will work exactly the same regardless of your platform. During recent testing, I created this effect simulating raindrops on a window, and this is what we're going to look at today. So there are two parts to this effect. I jump back to the beginning. It starts with some stationary drops hitting the window, and then there's the rivulets that run down the window pane. Those rivulets are a bit more advanced, and we'll get their own tutorial soon, but today we're going to focus on creating the stationary drops and using displacement to make them look like rain. So, let's create a new project, and then we'll create a new composite. Let's call it raindrops, and add a particle effect. Let's open the controls for this particle effect. We'll scoot forward a bit so we can see our particles. And let's change the emitter shape to a quad to represent the rectangular shape of our window. And then we'll set its size to match that of our project. I'm using 1920 by 1080 HD. And now our whole frame is filled with particles. Open the particle system controls, go down to the movement, and let's set their speed to zero. And that'll stop any of the particles from moving. Now you can see that they're not moving, but they do disappear pretty quickly. So to correct that, we'll change their life from 1 second to 30 seconds, and now they last all through the shot. Okay, so that gets the basic motion pretty close to what we need, actually. It's fairly simple. Now we need to focus on the appearance of the particles. So if we go into the appearance controls, of course HipFilm has a lot of textures built in that we can choose from. But there's not really an appropriate texture for raindrops on a window. So we are going to make our own. So to get accurate shapes for the drops, I figured I'd start by photographing the real thing. So I sprayed some water on my window with a garden hose. Then I went inside my house, used a zoom lens, and got as close as I could to the window to snap some shots so I could focus on the drops and blur out any background detail. So here's one of the shots I came up with. You can see that the drops are in focus, the sky in the background is just blurred out, so we can see the edges of those and select them pretty easily. So I've opened this up in Photoshop CS5 to create the textures, but you can use any image editor you want as long as it supports transparency or alpha channels. I'm going to zoom in on these drops, and the first thing I want to do is increase the contrast a bit by making a levels adjustment. At present you can see we're only using about half of the available tonal range, and when we apply displacement later on, the contrast between the brightest and darkest areas are what create the contour on each of the drops. So we want to increase the contrast here. So I'm just going to drag this down to the start of our histogram there to add a little bit more brightness to the brighter areas of our image. In determining which drops to use, try to select ones which are fairly nondescript in their shape. It might seem at first that some of the more unique shapes maybe like this drop here, which is kind of two drops stuck together, or this one over here. It might seem like getting some of those into the effect would add greater realism or interest, but keep in mind that each of the textures we select will be repeated dozens of times in our final effect. So any particle with an immediately recognizable shape will make the repetition really obvious. So we want to stick with particles that are a little bit more nondescript. So I'm going to use the Quick Select tool. You can use whatever selection tool you're most comfortable with, but the Quick Select in Photoshop makes this very easy. I'm just going to kind of paint in the drop there, and it's selected it nicely. There's a little bit of a spike coming off the side here. I can hold Option and deselect that. I'm going to zoom in a bit further. So that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to copy this, Edit, Copy, or you can hit Command C or Control C if you're on Windows. And then we're going to create a new image by going File New, or you can hit Command N or Control N on Windows. And this will create a new canvas with the exact pixel dimensions of the area we have selected. So I like to increase this just a little bit, let's say 150, and I like to make them square, but you don't have to. Um, this just gives us a little bit of extra space around the edge to make sure nothing's cut off. And then for the background contents, I'm going to use Transparent. So we have already have a transparent background. Hit OK, and now we can edit, paste, 
or Control-V, Command-V on Windows, and that just pastes our drop right in. So now we have the shape of our droplet with transparency around it. So that's pretty much all that's involved in creating this texture. We just need to save it now. So go File, Save, and make sure that for the format you choose PNG, since that will preserve the transparency data. And then we just need to name this. So let's name it Drop1 and hit Save. Okay, so that's basically how it works. Now we can deselect that. We'll zoom back out and pick our next drop. In fact, I might just do this one that's right next to it. And we're going to do, just do the same process for each drop that we want to select. So we select it. Command-C to copy. Command-N gives us a new document. I'm going to adjust the size. Hit OK. And then Command-V pastes our droplet in. Then we can save that. We'll call this Drop2. Save it as a PNG with no interlacing. So repeat this process for each drop to create as many textures as you need. I used a total of six. Using more textures will make repetition less obvious as you won't have so many repeating shapes, but six seems to be enough to do the trick. So here are the six textures which I created. Now we can move back to HitFilm and apply these to our effect. Okay, so back in HitFilm, we can import those images we just created. Grab all six of them, then select all six and drag them onto our timeline here. Make sure we can see all those. And then we'll just t disable the visibility for them. We don't actually need to see them there. Now jump back to our particle effect. And in the appearance, set the texture source to layer. And then we can choose as our source layer. Let's choose that first drop. And there you go. Now we have that drop there. It's pretty big. So we'll go into the movement scale. And let's set that to 20%. That's more like the size of the drops we need. But of course, it's pretty obvious that these are all the same texture, which is why we created six separate drops to begin with. But here we can only select one layer as our source, so we need to combine all of these into a single layer. So to do that, we'll just select all six of these layers, right-click and choose Make Composite Shot, which I realize is off-screen on my menu, but you'll see it. Let's name this one Textures, Convert, and now we have a new timeline named textures containing all of those. So turn the visibility on for all of those files. And we don't need all of this extra space around the edges. So we can edit the properties. If you go to media, you can see that 150 by 150 is the biggest any of our texture files is. So we'll use that as the size of our composite shot. The texture system is going to use the resolution of the frame as the size of the texture. So by fitting the composite shot to the texture size, scale will behave more logically. Now they're all stacked on top of each other, so we need to edit them so that only one texture is visible at a time. So I'll select all of those, make them about five seconds long, and then we can just one at a time shift these. And now only one texture will be visible at a time. So as we scroll through, we see all of them. Okay, now when we go back into our raindrops timeline, we've got that composite shot here. That contains all of our textures. We'll turn off its visibility again. And now we'll go back into our particle effect and select that as our source layer. Now you've probably noticed we still only have one texture being used, but that's because of the frame setting. Right now it's set to use one single frame for each particle, but if we switch this from single to random, then textures will be applied from random frames within that textures layer we have selected. So the next thing to do is add a little bit more variety to the effect. There is some slight variation in the size of the textures we've used, but to add even more variation, we'll open the movement variation controls and adjust the scale there. So set that to 10%, and you can see now we have a significantly larger variation in the size of our raindrops. Now in the appearance variation, we'll adjust the texture angle. And that will just take the image that's applied to each particle and rotate it by the amount we've assigned. So set this to 90, and each particle will then be turned anywhere from 0 to 90 degrees in either direction, which makes the repetition of shapes even less obvious. Okay, so that's pretty good. I'm going to make the rain a little bit heavier by, in the general settings, increasing the particles per second. Let's just set that to 100. And now as we play through this effect, you can see that we get the general result that we're after. 
Now, the one thing I don't like still is the way the particles just suddenly appear. I'd like it to be a little bit more gradual, kind of, so they kind of splatter onto the window a bit. And this will be very subtle, but it is these sort of things that can really help make an effect convincing. So make sure our particle system is selected, and we are going to use the lifetime panel to animate the size of each particle over time. So switch to lifetime, go down and select the scale property, and then select this first preset, which just gives us two points from left to right at an even value. Select the first keyframe and set the scale to zero. Now create another keyframe just by clicking quite near it. And with that one selected, set the scale to 100. All right, now we know the life of these particles is 30 seconds. So to make this change happen very quickly in just three or four frames, let's set this life to 0 0.3. Now those keyframes are practically on top of each other. That change in size will happen very quickly. But you can see how they gradually get bigger there. As you watch through, it just gives it a little bit, it makes it a little bit more gentle as those raindrops hit the window. Now it looks like we are ready for some displacement. So we need some footage. Import your scene of preference. I'm going to use a different scene than I used in my original test just to see how it works. So I'll import this. Right click, choose make composite shot and hit OK. So now here I'm going to mute this layer so you can still hear me talking. And I'm going to kind of jump into the middle of it. So now we have our footage in, we can add our raindrops comp to the timeline. So in the media panel, find our raindrops, add that in. It can be above or below the footage, doesn't really matter because we are going to hide its visibility. And then find the displacement effect and add it to your footage layer. Double click that to open its controls. And for the source layer, choose our raindrops composite. That's good. Now for horizontal displacement, choose luminance. For vertical displacement, also choose luminance. And then for the maximum horizontal and vertical displacement settings, you want to increase this quite a bit from five. I actually used 120 in my original test. So let's play that back and see what it looks like. Yeah, 120 looks pretty good on this one as well. So if you're working with HD footage, that's kind of a good starting point. And there you have it. We could call that effect done. Except this really only works if you want the viewer's focus to be on the drops because they're so sharp. And usually that won't be the case. You want them to be looking through the glass or the window that the drops are on. So we need to be able to soften those drops some. So let's look at how we can do that. You could take the actual texture images, go back into Photoshop and blur each one of them, but that doesn't really give you the option of adjusting the amount of blur later on. So we're gonna use a technique that lets us stay in hit film. Right click on our footage layer and duplicate it. You could also hit Command D or Control D if you're on Windows. And on this lower copy, delete the displacement effect. Okay, so now we have just our footage and then we have a copy of our footage with displacement applied. Now what we're going to do is find the set matte effect and apply that to our top layer. And for the source layer there, we're also going to choose the raindrops composite. Okay, we'll use the alpha. And now if we turn off our lower layer of footage, you can see the top layer, all it contains is the raindrops with the displaced footage inside them. So now with our regular footage underneath, we can apply a blur to the raindrops without affecting the actual footage. So let's just grab a blur effect, drag it on there, and we very quickly, even at the default blur setting of five, get a fairly out of focus effect. In fact, this is a little bit more out of focus than I would like. So I actually used a radius of one and an iterations of one to keep this blur as subtle as I could, but obviously you could adjust the amount of blur for how much defocusing you want. Let's zoom in to 100% just for fun. If I turn the blur on and off, you can see how much of a difference it's making. It's just softening those edges and kind of blending the effect into the scene a little better so that it feels natural. So there you go. That completes our raindrops tutorial for the stationary drops. In the sequel, we'll look at applying a gravity force to pull these drops downward so they run down the window and we'll look at using mobile emitters to create rivulets as the drops are pulled down. So thank you very much for watching and let's do it again soon.